nor the government institutions were prepared for the chaos that ensued. To understand the level of confusion in Russia at the time, people who lived in... I, dude, I, I just want to play video games. I can't talk about anything without somebody getting so fucking triggered. Holy shit. Um... I like so I've gotten like multiple emails people like Jesse you don't understand work from home is the best thing ever this guy just sent me a DM on Twitter your take on work from home was unironically dog shit and it literally triggered me not exaggerating I was literally pulling out what little hair I had left for once you actually broke my mind mentally as someone who works from home you're the most exaggerated opinion on work from home I've ever heard I guarantee you that there are people that have been doing work from home over the pandemic who didn't see another real human being for six months. I know what happened. Guarantee. I know what happened. Guaranteed. I'm not saying that I wouldn't like to work from home. I'd probably do it. I'm an antisocial motherfucker. But the difference is, is that I'm not depressed and on the verge of fucking suicide. Jesus. What was the opinion? My opinion is that it's not good in society that we're becoming more and more and more and more put into these little boxes where you never fucking move. You guys are literally turning into the people from... um. Um, the the robot guy is it Wally? Where the humans are like their legs don't even work anymore. They have chairs that float around, and it's like I sit in my chair and I work from home, and then I play video. Where's the four chan comic? Hold on. Where is it? Fuck, I'm not going to be able to find it. Can't the same be said about you, though? It doesn't matter if you like it. It does matter if you like it. I'm not depressed. <laughs> what? It's fine. If you enjoy it, that's fine. But a lot of people are miserable as fuck. And I think a lot of it has to do with the lack of socialization. I don't know why you guys compare. Like, I enjoy being a fucking... Her but I'm not even a hermit. I shouldn't even say that. I have a fucking wife that lives with me. Um, and I go out and I see people sometimes. So that's not even true. Um... I, like, this generation, it's like fucking one out of, like, three women have, have been on an SSRI in the past year or so. It's like an insane number of people. And then, like, fucking men that are depressed as fuck and can't find people and blah, blah, blah. Like, what is the, um, there's a, there's the comic where the guy, like, he, like, opens the, he opens the window, sees the sun, closes it, computer, game, 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 goes to the bathroom, game, game, sleep, and then wake up and does it all again. Where is it? I'm not gonna be able to find it. Apartments, which were initially all state owned, were hesitant at first to accept ownership of their apartments, even when the state handed out- I think it's a lot to assume the majority of these needs are depressed. Is it? Fine, we'll go dig through the data at some point. Maybe this is whole characterization is just made up in my fucking brain. I was under the assumption that millennials and now Gen Xers all have huge fucking problems with making friends, meeting people, dating, having like fulfilling lives. Like they do okay income wise uh, because a lot of them went to college, got educated, got jobs. I thought a lot of them are fucking miserable. Maybe I'm just making that up. Maybe that's not the case. Maybe I, maybe I need to go read more data. Ownership free of charge. They were worried about taking on the responsibility of having to pay for the maintenance of common hallways and roofs, which up until then were the responsibility of the government. Factory managers and employees were often slow to take on ownership of the businesses they had worked for. They knew how inefficient the businesses were and equally how reliant they were on government contracts. The Soviet economy's focus on the production of military hardware meant that not many of these factories would be viable without government contracts and an ongoing arms race. These people weren't fools, but after 70 years of being told that financial assets like shares of stock- Fuck, and then some fu God, fuck, you guys just trigger the fuck out of me. I, did I, I think I ended up banning that guy. I should probably unban him when we're Some guy posted on Reddit, he's like, uh, Destiny has no fucking idea. I'm, I'm paraphrasing and exaggerating greatly. He didn't say this, but he was like, Destiny doesn't have any idea what it's like to try to buy a house as a normal person. Keep in mind that he's a fucking streamer and he has no idea, blah, blah, blah. Motherfucker, I bought my first house probably knew what streaming was. Shut the fuck up, okay? Why do people make shit up about me? New lore drops, okay? I bought my first house with Rachel before I even knew anything about computer shit. We were both working at the casino. We were doing fine. Jesus. But also, I didn't live in like fucking LA or San Francisco or need to live in the biggest fucking city in the fucking world. Oh, 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 you buy house for 100K. That's what I did. What is this? Oh my God. 
That was a generic accent, by the way. I don't know if it sounds like anything. That's your fault. Hello, cool. There. Everywhere I go, people ask if he's if I'm a Korean. They go, "Is he Korean?" This is Hapa Bay. What is this? If I'm in uh, Japan, they go, "Is he Japanese?" And finally, I'm in a country where they're correct. Or I get autistic people like Michael L in YouTube chat. I travel an hour to work five days a week. Gas is literally killing me. Destiny said the longest he's traveled to work was 15 minutes. Work from home is good. Yeah, in your case, it probably is, bucko. Congratulations. There is some dude is typing up like right now, like, Destiny, you don't understand. I live three hours out of London and I have to fly into work every single day. You're telling me that I need to take a plane every day to work and I can't work from home, Destiny? You're literally killing me. Like, Holy shit. Some other dude is typing up right now, uh, Destiny, I actually work from home at the hospital and I'm on dialysis with my kid. Do you want me to unplug our fucking kidneys and watch him fucking die just so that I can go to work? Like, holy shit. Yeah. Well, I don't understand what the fuck this video is. This has to be a troll. Why don't you specify that you're not making a claim, but simply a criticism? I, dude, because I get sick and tired of every single time I fucking say anything. I've got to, like, make, like, 72 different qualifications, or else you guys are going to fucking have your nuts drop off, and you're going to cry in the corner. Like, <clears throat> if you live from home, and you're 30 years old, a lot of people are probably going to view you as a loser. But you're not necessarily a loser. Make sure that bad. There are circumstances in which it is acceptable. You might have a really big house and maybe there's places for you to live. Your parents might be sick and maybe you have to take care of them. Maybe it's a thing that's part of endemic to your culture and it's not a big deal. Maybe it's the expectation where you live. So people like, like I have to qualify like 75 different things. Like I live in the United States. Like this is generally the culture of where I'm at. And these are generally things I speak to. I don't want to make 752 million different qualifications on every single statement I make or else you're going to get fucking triggered because you can't understand what the fuck the person is saying. Holy shit. Just kidding. Okay. Doc, we're worthless. How is this discourse still going? This is the least controversial. Because there are like three posts in my separate list where people felt like personally, like personally offended. And it's like, okay. What, Mel? Why don't you guys get public transport? Because we don't believe in public. You're one hour away from work. Why the fuck isn't there a bus? Because we don't do that here. Because the United States sucks. You understand that Americans think that public transport is for poor. Yeah, but we also think that, that, oh, here's another issue with the United States, and I realized this yesterday, because I have to get the oil changed in my car. I realize now why people, go, leave! What? I'm talking to my stream! This is my home, too. No, it's not, bitch. I pay the rent here. No, you pay. I pay. I took you off the lease. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. How much you want to bet? I took you off after our last fight. 500. So I can kick you out. 500. Bet. Psych! Get out of my room, Mel. I'm talking to Mel. people. Get out of here. Melker. I won. You owe me. No. Yes. <laughs> we didn't shake on it. Steve. Oh. Put on pants. I can be here. You're going to get me banned. No. I'm not showing you anything, bitch. Mm-hmm. One thing I noticed is that stuff in cities is always shit. Or are they, is this just every single major American city that I've been to? Like if I think, so here's what I was thinking, okay? I need to get my oil changed. So I'm just kind of like looking around at like what's near me, okay? Now, if you're in like suburbs, everything is nice. <laughs> but in the city, bro, I don't know if I would want to put my car near any of these shops. Everything is run down, disgusting, destroyed. The signs are fucked. The people all look miserable. There's 72 cars piled up outside every fucking like car auto shop or whatever. And that, yeah, and then I realized, I think that Americans just, I think in their minds, Americans just have associated inner cities. Would you, would you call it inner city or what would you, like with like dump garbage trash. And then suburbs are where the nice things goes. The nice things go. It's so annoying. I hate it so much. Here's another thing that is really hard to get over for Americans. That, um, do you know why Americans don't like buying things at corner stores? It's because in America, 
When you buy shit at a corner store or a gas station, things are usually overpriced like a motherfucker. Like I'll pay like $4 for a half gallon of milk that's gonna be expired in three days at a gas station. Whereas if I drive to a Walmart or a CVS or a Target or a Walgreens, or whatever the fuck, I can get like a normal gallon of milk for, uh, that's gonna last for like, you know, three weeks or whatever. Um, Whereas in Europe, that's true in Europe as well. Really? I feel like in Europe, you guys have a lot of corner stores where stuff is sold at like decent prices. And uh, in the United States, if you're buying shit at like a small store, usually you're getting ripped the fuck off. Okay, maybe in Europe, maybe it does suck. When I say it used to be a dump like that until Giuliani. Yeah, that's what my aunt says. I don't think we have corner, we don't really have corner shops in America, do we? We have like, does CVS count as a corner shop? Anything smaller than that is usually, from what I've seen, is gonna be like a specialty, like an Asian or like a Mexican grocery store. I don't know if I ever normally see in American cities like corner shops that are like, we sell some groceries here, but we're not like a major like CVS or whatever. We have 7-Eleven. I feel like 7-Eleven is expensive. I'd have to go down and check. What do you mean you don't have corner shops? What the fuck does that mean, Destiny? Like in Europe, it feels like if you're in any apartment in any major city, you can walk outside and within five minutes be in a store where you can buy like a gallon of milk. In the United States, that's not, that's not always true. They're all over in places like Baltimore, DC. I'm sorry, when I say corner store, I mean a place where you can buy groceries, not like just random trinket doodad bullshit things or whatever, but bodegas in New York City, okay. Is it just me or there are no bakeries in the US we buy bread to take home? That's a very European thing. We have bakeries in the United States, but I feel like in France, Germany, and even in Sweden, in Stockholm at least, there's bakeries everywhere. You can like walk by, where, where are they in Stockholm? I know in, in the place I've been in France and Germany, there are like bakeries fucking everywhere. There are so many bakeries. In Germany, it's insane. Um, I don't see anywhere near as many in the United States. Dude, this, there were so many funny things from the Trump administration. I hope we never forget. This is probably one of the funniest things that has probably happened in American political shit, like history. This is so funny, dude. Um, don't ever forget this, guys. The Four Seasons, I think, is a really, really, really nice hotel. Um, like you're paying like $500 for like the basic room a night, and then they go up to, depending on if you're getting a suite or whatever, it's insane. And they booked a, um, they booked a speech at the Four Seasons. Giuliani did. But they, but it was a Four Seasons landscaping company. <laughs> oh my God, dude, too much. Don't link, we should, I might start banning majority report clips because it's just, we need to like react to conservatives more. Because look, the, the Republicans are not, are, are, you know, they're, they're not doing that for real. <laughs> And they are not going to throw over their um, their elevation of property rights uh, for the sake of their their new sort of like populist project. Yeah, That's I mean, private real estate is a conspiracy to keep people homeless. Like that. <laughs> oh, why? Private groceries is a conspiracy to make people hungry. Like helps investment when if you go build uh, enough housing to house everybody that is going to hurt their investments in those properties do you think that do you think that <laughs> what what did that even mean what this is just like do you think that people that invest in real estate are like oh boy i hope we've got a lot of homeless people in here to drive up the cost because all those homeless people you know they're competing hard like fucking johnny the fucking one tooth meth addict outside is really driving up the cost of my fucking real estate like what does this even mean Right, like that's just, they're fundamentally a cabal against the um, building of housing. And so like, uh, and the-, the one Who does he think opposes housing? Does he think it's companies and real estate investors that are opposing housing? Right, like that's just, they're fundamentally a cabal against the um, building of housing. And so like, uh, and the, the one thing that they do have um, in, con in common with uh, slavers is that they rely on state power for enforcement, right? Just like <laughs> yeah. slaves yes. needed slave catchers. Um, it's not the free market. You need the... I think someone said this is an old clip. It feels like Sam realizes like, fuck, this guy's a... D like, I feel like Sam is still... We got to bring the old Sam out. I need to do a podcast with Sam. 
He's definitely to the left of me, but he's he's still in he at least was an intelligent guy. I know he's in there. I know he's in there somewhere, okay? I know he's in there somewhere. Enforcement, right? Just like <laughs> yep. slaves yes. needed slave catchers. Um, and he's like, it's not uh, the free market. You need look the at that. state to come evict. Look at that horizontal mouth. We're forcing, you know, um, police to get vaccinated so they can go evict people, right? And <laughs> we're just deciding as a people, we're not going to use the government for that. There's a difference between treating human beings like property and treating property like property. <laughs> exactly. Right. Or like treating property like human beings. Because look, the, the Republicans are not, are, are you know, I think we will, um, hold on. I think we, did we watch this or did we read an article about this? We might've read an article about this. I tried to, um, I tried to be really careful not to fall into the trap of thinking that your one issue would solve every societal problem. Like I used to think the same about like lobbying. If we got rid of lobbying, everything would improve. <sighs> I don't know about the housing thing though, man. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like the way your city is laid out, like, bleeds over into so many different things. Um, oh, man. And, like, on its own might actually fix a lot of different shit. Um, I don't know, man. It's a, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to not fall into that trap again, but holy shit. Well, I, th I don't think we watched it, uh, this video. I think we read an article on this. But it's like, it would make things cheaper for poor people because it would drive down the cost of housing if we built more uh, high-density areas cheaper housing they wouldn't have to spend if you're poor your two biggest bills well depending on how much you fucked your life up your two biggest bills are either housing and your car or might be housing and child support <laughs> if you fucked up so housing and your car your two biggest expenses okay cars are huge expenses for poor people not just buying it but financing it can suck repairs can suck if you can ax that with good public transport boom so cheaper apartments no fucking car payment public transport it gets rid of a lot of weird small poor people problems too. Like you're never gonna get a DUI. You're never gonna get a speeding ticket. Um, you can get to anywhere at any time of the day, generally. Um, it, there's like there's like seven other things that it bleeds over into. People can start families earlier because they don't have to save up as much money for a big down payment on a house. Um, I think there was something about making school safer even or something. Environmental impacts are way lower. Um, like, there, like there's, there would be so many good things if we could just like push the reset button on everything related to housing. Oh, economically, these places are way more prosperous. You have like this, there's a weird economic effect when you've got people that are integrated with one another that are working together, there's like a synergizer. Um, no car wrecks, true. Um, you guys would be shocked. You guys would be shocked at how good, I think my brain has been poisoned a little bit, but like New York and London traffic is not that bad, even in Manhattan. Um, and it's gonna trigger the fuck out of people that live in London and New York for me to say that. And all I can tell you is, oh my God, you need to go live in LA, okay, for one month. And you will emerge from that city thinking, holy Christ, I never knew how fucking horrible. Like, I, because I kind of figured in New York, in Manhattan especially, because of everything I've seen in, 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 uh, and Melina can attest to this, okay? I'm not making this up. I figured in New York it would be bumper to bumper traffic on the entire island. That's what I thought. Um, I thought it'd be bumper to bumper traffic across the entire island of Manhattan. And it's not. You can get, like, you can hop in a taxi. It might take you a bit, but, like, you'll get from one place to another. But LA is just ungodly fucked. The standstill freeways, the, uh, the, 16 hours a day of bumper to bumper traffic on the five, the fucking constant car crashes, the 27 with highways that are still totally jammed, the lights that go on and off that uh, like allow you to go onto even the fucking freeway ramp, the, uh, oh my God, dude. LA is just so fucking horrible. It is a nightmare. Um, and then London too, I was shocked. That there, there are cars, there is traffic. I'm not telling you there's none, but given the density of people that live in LA and New York, the traffic is way better than I thought it would be. It was like insane. I was, I was, I was, my mind was blown. My mind was blown. Um, <clears throat> that's true to say, Destiny, but LA and New York City cannot be more different in terms of sprawl. Well, that's what I mean. Ur like urban sprawl is like the curse of the suburb and the destruction of high density housing, right? 
Okay, we have another grade A terminally fucking autistic fucking retard in chat. Stop saying New York is fine. You've only been to Manhattan. I feel like literally every single time I bring up New York City, I'm pretty sure I literally say every single time I was in Manhattan. Did I not say that? Okay, we're going back to the video. Never mind. Here. Pieces of paper distributed by capitalists to create the illusion of wealth. Most Russians had no idea of how much these businesses might be worth. I should note that during Soviet times, except for the sale of food grown in your own garden. New York City and Seattle are the only two good U.S. cities. Anyone who disagrees is coping. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but Seattle is fucked, okay? I, 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 I don't know. I think Seattle is... <laughs> I think Seattle was fucked, but... All private business activity was prohibited. If you broke these laws, you were charged with an economic crime, and depending on the scale of the crime, the punishment could be as severe as death. Now, despite these risks, there was... How is Seattle fucked? There's trash everywhere. The streets are fucking broken down and gross. There's a fuck ton of homeless people everywhere, like crazy homeless people. Um, massive suburban sprawl outside of Seattle. I don't know how you can think otherwise. I haven't tried to do like the buses or I think you guys have a tram or something that runs around on a rail in Seattle, maybe. But um, the, the city is a dumpster fire. Like that city is fucked. Have you ever been to Seattle? Um, probably s six or seven times, seven or eight times. I went there a few times to visit Bad Bunny. I've got another friend that lives up there that I've visited a few times. And then I've been up there for other shit like Still a black market during Soviet times. We have buses, the subway, and trams. Oh, I've never seen the Seattle subway. I don't know what that's like. I will say, <laughs> I've only really been around one time, so maybe it's not, maybe it's not good. But I had a really good impression of the Boston subway system. I don't know if that's good or maybe it's fucked, but. <clears throat> A particularly popular item to import and sell was blue jeans from America. Other black marketeers engaged in foreign exchange and still others provided private services and repairs. Most of the people involved- Your shotgun is being shipped to an FFL, right? Not directly to you. Oh, the problem is I think Browning only makes like 13 of these shotguns like a year. And so they were supposed to do another run of them in June. And I think that was- no response timed out. Wait, what? Obama. Is they calculated the value of these assets and divided. Oh, I'm seeing the shit with Coinbase. Dude, if Coinbase went under right after I bought all that Bitcoin on that fucking site, I'm going to fucking lose it. Then I'll be waiting for my Mt. Gox coins and my Coinbase fucking shit in some bankruptcy bullshit. Yo, when are we getting our Mt. Gox money back, guys? Bro, my Bitcoin is fucked. $22,000 is what it's worth now? Holy shit. 51% drop year to date. Oh my God. What motivated you to buy Bitcoin? Um, well, when I cashed out my American's card room shit, it all went into Bitcoin, so. I think it was like $12,000 worth of Bitcoin. Now it's worth 8,000, so. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just deleting my money. Deleting my money off the internet. $10,000 at a time, every day. We just lose another. Get that up by the number of citizens in the country. I know V Rising, oh, I'm doing emails, I'm almost done. That's, you guys are watching this, you guys are on the iPad. Okay, I'm doing my emails, okay? Dad will be back, chill. You thought it would go up? It'll go up. I think Bitcoin will go to 100K. I feel like it'll happen. It feels like Bitcoin has this inevitable trajectory to where it it will drop. Oh, ooh, it did test 60K twice. Feels like it goes up, has a huge drop, then it goes like super high again, and it does this over and over and over again. I need to ask you, you read the mansion email? Uh, probably, Brandon, but if you send me massive emails, sometimes I read them, sometimes I just delete them, because I, I can't sit. It's not, I can't sit doing emails two hours a day. It's too much. Damn, dude, those people at the peak got fucked. 